Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. It's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy the video. In this week's episode, I'll be making a bowl from a piece of yew casting multicolored epoxy resin with a segmented rim. So without further ado, let's get into it. After cutting the yew down to fit in the casting bucket, the next job was to remove all of the bark. Some of this was loose and easy to remove, but most was stuck fast. I found the best way to get it off was to use a brass wheel in a drill. The reason for removing the bark is to get down to a solid surface the resin can bond to. If the bark is left on, there's a good chance that it'll detach while spinning on the lathe, and that might not end well. Bark removed, it was time for casting. First I waxed the bucket to aid in releasing the cured blank, then it was on to mixing the resin. The colours for this project were blue, crystal green, rose bengal and sunny orange. And this brings me on to this week's sponsor, Tea Expert. They offer a range of epoxy resin products, along with curing machines and mica powders. I have a link to their website and a 10% discount code in the video description. The Tea Expert resin is thoroughly mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio, then left to pre-cure. I mixed an additional batch without any colorant. I use this to prime the surface of the U. I hope this would reduce the voids that I've had to deal with on other projects. I didn't want to waste a brush, so I used my nitrile glove fingers to massage the resin into the wood, making sure I got into all the nooks and crannies. I mixed purple mica powder into what was left and waited for the resin to pre-cure. The blue resin heated up very quickly, which forced me to pour the rest before they were ready. There's nothing you can do about it, you just got to get it in the casting bucket as quick as you can. Each time I show this process, I consider showing the times and the temperatures, and I often get asked in the comments about it. The reason I don't go into any detail is because so much depends on the ambient temperature, the type and make of the resin, the mix ratio, and any number of other factors that make this very hard to show. Basically, what works for me may well not work for anyone else. It really is a case of trial and error, and I don't want to appear to give anyone the wrong advice. Whilst filling the bucket, I realised I hadn't mixed enough resin, so with no time to waste, I cut some more pieces of you from the offcuts and added them to the casting bucket. The blue resin was beginning to gel, so I had to move fast. In the end, I saved the pour and got it into the pressure pot, but it wasn't as full as I would have liked. It's the next day and the resin has cured nicely, though there was a bit of a void on the side, so I took the opportunity to add some more resin to fill it and top up the casting. I chose to do it with sunny orange, hoping it would form a solid ring in the finished piece. This went back into the pressure pot to cure overnight. It's a few days later and something went wrong with the orange coloured resin. It's still soft, 
so either I didn't get the ratio correct or I didn't mix it thoroughly enough. In any case, I would have to deal with it as it is. The bucket had to be cut off the casting, but once it was clear, I fixed the blank onto the lathe and set about removing the outer layers, getting it to round and balanced. The top seemed a good place to start. I used the bowl gouge to cut away the protruding pieces of yew down into the orange resin. Once that was nice and level, I used the carbide cutter to remove the high spots on the side. completely remove the shiny low spots and cut down into the outer layers, I used a freshly sharpened bowl gouge to remove around eighth of an inch of material. I found the trick here is IRPMs and firm constant pressure, allowing the blade to do all the work. After turning the blank around, I set about flattening the base and cutting the mortise. Because of the height of the blank, I wasn't sure this would be the finished base, but I needed a mortise to properly fix the blank in a four-jaw chuck. The mortise was cut in the usual way. First, a quarter inch parting tool to cut the recess to a depth of around six millimeters, quarter of an inch. Next, the dovetail cutter to cut the dovetail, then the bowl gouge to clean away the excess material. Mortise done, I sanded to 1000 grit and added a wax finish. To keep the chuck centred, I used a tailstock to hold it in place whilst I tightened it up. That done, the blank was turned around, again using the tailstock to hold it firmly in place. straight into forming the cutout for the pedestal. I was eager to see how the resin on you would look. Using the 3 8 bowl gouge I cut into the blank. Now at this point the resin has had about 4 days to cure and it's cutting really easily. There was a little bit of chipping and tear out in the base of the cut, but overall it was going well, so I continued cutting into the blank, taking time to reduce the diameter of the base as I went along. It 
was looking good, but something wasn't right. The blank had moved off centre. The base was no longer perpendicular to the centre line. I tried loosening and retightening the chuck, but it didn't help. Anyway, I didn't want to waste too much time on it, so I got back on with forming the cutout, this time with a mid-sized carbide. Now the cutout was roughly to shape, I set about forming the transition between the upper and lower cut lines. For this one I wanted it to diminish to a sharp point. First I used the bowl gouge, then I switched to the spindle gouge. Whilst I was here, I blended the side down into the recess. Nothing dramatic, just a gentle flowing curve. Then I went back to the spindle gouge to finish the cutout. Moving on, the side needed some work. Recently on my other projects I've been creating a pinch waist, and this one was no exception. Compared to my earlier pieces of work which I left straight, I think this looks much better. Whilst doing this, the crack in the side opened up, and this would need repairing. But before that, I wanted to get closer to the finished surface, and there was a patch of resin I wanted to remove to fully expose the edges of the timber. The large negative rate scraper was used to remove thin layers of waste material, refining the shape, getting close to the finished profile. With that done, I set about repairing the crack. For this, I used T-Expert UV resin mixed with black mica powder. Using a mixing stick, I forced the resin down into the void until it was full. Then I activated it with a UV torch. Now this had mixed results, and I have to say it was all my fault. The resin requires UV light to set it off, but I'd added black mica powder that blocked the light, so it took a long time to fully cure. It's now two days later. The UV resin still hasn't fully cured, so I began cleaning up the repair using the UV light to finish the curing process as I went along. Final go with a negative rate scraper, and after a final sanding, for now, the outside was done. The top was next. The orange resin was still on the soft side, so it had to go. The bowl gouge made short work of removing it. After that I decided to fix the base, 
To do this, I would need to cut a new mortise in the top. Now you've already seen me do this once, so I'm going to skip ahead. With the blank turned around, I could properly level the base. This also thinned it down, which is something else I wanted to do. Taking the bowl gouge, I cut about 4mm off, which more or less removed the first mortise, so that would need to be redone as well. A final scrape with a skew and the base was level. Next I cut another mortise, which I'll skip past and move on to the next stage. I was in two minds as to whether I should make a segmented rim or just leave the bowl as it is, but I couldn't resist the look of the solid used segments, so I set to cutting the timber to size on the bandsaw. Also you may have noticed the audio on the clips has disappeared. Don't worry, it comes back in a short while. The U was cut to approximately 50 by 25 millimeters. Then it was over to the table saw to cut 18 segments. I only just had enough length to work with, but when they were done, I assembled the ring. This is a new to me type of glue. I was keen to see how it would perform. It bonds in 10 minutes, which could be very useful on some upcoming projects. Anyway, once all the segments were roughly assembled, I used a hose clamp to apply pressure and hold it together. Placed the rim to one side to allow the glue to fully cure and got on with hollowing out the main blank. For this I tried a new approach. First I drilled as deep as I could with a 45mm forcing a bit. I followed that with a 75mm bit, going as deep as the first. Doing this gave me a great start to get stuck in with a mid-sized carbide. check and retighten of the chuck and I was straight back into removing the waste material. If you're wondering why I use a mid-sized carbide, it's because I don't have a full-size one with a normal cutter. I've tried using other carbide cutters and high speed steel hollowing tools, but I keep coming back to this one. After 30 minutes or so, the majority of the bowl was hollowed out, so I could concentrate on getting the rim prepared 
and fixed in place. I can confirm that the glue did bond in 10 minutes, but I left it overnight to fully cure. After removing the hose clamp, it was over to the drum sander to flatten the segments. On the rim to the main blank, I used rapid setting epoxy with black mica powder. After mixing, I applied a generous layer around the top of the main blank and placed that on the rim. This was left for 30 minutes or so until it had cured. It's half an hourish later, the rim is firmly secured, so I could get on with the final turning and shaping. The inside of the rim was first, using the bowl gouge to get roughly to shape, I cut a flowing curve from the upper edge down into the side. This was done with a series of push cuts and shear scraping. carbide came out to clean up the resin joint, then it was onto a small negative rate scraper to blend and fair the inner surface, finishing off with a skew to smooth out the rim. Inside done, it was straight onto the outer surface. First was the undercut to the rim. For this, I used the mid-sized carbide, slicing away at the excess material to form a sweeping curve. Whilst doing this, I trimmed down the outer edge, getting it to round and nice and flat. cut was coming along nicely. The U-Tumber is very easy to work with. The trick is remembering not to take too much off. Using the carbide, I blended the rim into the side, switching to the negative rate scraper to refine the surface and remove any tool marks. out needed a bit of clean up this was done with a spindle gouge and I finished with a skew tidying up the edge of the base and that was it done Sanded inside and out from 80 to 3000 grit, then I cleaned down with denatured alcohol. This was followed by two liberal coats of sanding sealer, each one denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. Next up, Yorkshire Grit. 
just a single application, thoroughly cleaned away till no more residue is picking up on the paper towel. Then the resin polishing. First, Mocha Polar Shine 10. A single coat, thoroughly cleaned away, ready for the next stage. Polar Shine 5, another single coat, polished off to leave a deep shine. To finish, Hampshire Sheen Gloss Finishing Wax, two coats, buffed to seal and protect the surface. And that's it, another project finished. And I like it, and I hope you like it too. This was another one which took some time to do, but it was worth it. The multicoloured resin and U looks great together with a segmented rim. I have a lot more projects in the making, so hopefully I can get back to a more regular upload schedule. Anyway, that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, it really helps the channel grow. A thumbs up will be much appreciated, and comments are always welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.